welcome back to another video. This one is a very special vlog. We're here in Chicago, my hometown, and Rivers Casino has granted me the honor and permission to be the first ever vlogger to film a vlog here in the VIP room. Shout out to Hamal, I'll introduce him later in this video, the GM of this room, but that is a big responsibility. So I've assembled a table of the finest degenerates here in the Chicagoland area. We're gonna play 2-5, it's a 1K uh, big stack. It's a very friendly game, I wanted to keep it vlogger friendly. A few people tonight have never played bigger than 1-2 or 1-3, so it's a super cool environment. Some uh, DGENs. If you guys are from the Chicagoland area and you want to play in this VIP room that's normally for 25, 25 and larger, let me know on Instagram in the DMs or leave a comment down below and I'll get you into the next game. I'm probably going to do one around Thanksgiving and then one around Christmas again. Big things coming on the vlog. The first ever vlogger here in this room to have permission. A big honor and a big responsibility. So I thank all of you guys for your support along the way. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. Let's go! I'm not gonna lie, it feels pretty weird to be allowed to film at Rivers. I've probably played over 25 sessions here as it's the nicest property in Chicago, but they're super strict. You can't even have your phone on the rail. So when I was presented with the opportunity, I snap called and invited a bunch of my friends to join me in the back room. It's gonna be a wild night. We hop into the 2-5 for $1,000. Right, first hand, it's only fitting. I'm hosting the game, so they give me pocket aces. I'm on the button, and my editor, Lucas, raises it up to $15. San comes in for the three bet to $40. You guys should remember San from a few videos back around a year ago from The Green Room, a private game here in Chicago. But uh, San raises it up to $40, and of course, I have to come in for a four bet. Okay, oh, wait, 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 give me a second. I wasn't expecting to be active the very first hand. Why not? <laughs> but I'm definitely playing this shit. What are you, jamming? <laughs> yeah, I'm jamming. Is that binding? <laughs> <laughs> And I four bet him to 125, which gets rid of Lucas, and San decides to put in the call. I invited you for a reason, San. No. It's not because I like you. I <laughs> Leading us off, heads up to a flop, which comes 8 4 deuce rainbow. San should check it over to me, and that's what he does. This is a board that should connect a little bit better with him than myself. So I decide to check behind with a very strong hand, and we see a 7 of clubs on the turn. A benefit to checking behind on the flop is it allows San to overvalue a hand like 8-9 or Ace-9, but uh, when he checks it over to me, definitely have to start going for value. There's 272 in the middle, and there's a lot of draws like 9-10, 5-6 now made a straight, so that's not good news, but uh, there's the backdoor club draw as well. I don't have a club in my hand, so he easily could have a hand like Ace-Queen of Clubs, Ace-Jack of Clubs, and I'm going to charge him for that. I make it $125 to go. San folds his cards, we take down the first hand of the night, and I let him pick one. The Ace of Diamonds gets exposed, $400 coming over my way. Moving right along, there's a $10 under the gun straddle on, and I raise it up to 30 bones here with Queen Jack offsuit. We're going to get three players to put in the call, so four ways to a flop on a queen high board seems pretty groovy. Queen 6 for rainbow. Now normally you will go for a bet when you uh, make top pair, but against three other opponents, it's not uncommon for one of them to have sixes or pocket fours. In fact, it's pretty likely, so uh, multi-way, you want to do a lot of checking and uh, let the opponents do the betting for you. Of course, we still could be ahead, so if someone bets and someone calls, I'm not going to fold. Not that nitty, but uh, Daniel decides here to bet from the cutoff for $50, and that's going to get one other caller. Kenrich, out of the big blind, puts in the $50. I'm not going anywhere. They easily could have a hand like Queen-9 suited, Queen-10. We'd have that beat. They also could have a hand like 3-5 or 5-7 for an open-ended straight draw, so I put in the call, and we are going off to the turn. Turn brings in 5-7, so that's not great news, but when Kenrich checks it over to me, obviously I'm going to keep checking in flow, and Daniel checks behind, so it's probable that we have the best hand at this point. The 8 of clubs really shouldn't change too much because 5-7 already had the straight, so when Kenrich bets out for $75, he still could have a hand like Queen Jack, Queen 10, Queen 9. I can't go anywhere when the turn checks through. I put in the $75, and Daniel goes into the tank. He looks like he wants to fold, but at the same time, he can't let go of his cards. He puts in the call, so I think I have Daniel beat at least. I don't know what Kenrich has uh, until Kenrich turns over the exact same hand, and then Daniel turns over a little bit of a nit roll, ace-queen offsuit, and he's going to take down this $500 pot. 
But uh, Daniel's a good kid. I know he's not knit rolling the table. He probably just thought that one of us had a better hand. Most likely Kenrich, right? Kenrich could easily have sixes or fours in that spot. So I don't blame him for thinking a little bit about it. But uh, at the end of the day, he's getting rewarded with that $500 pot. Battling back in this next hand, 5-4 of spades. I am in the straddle. Kevin on my right limps in for $10. And we're not going to let that slide. $35 is the price. And he continues once again. We see a flop of king eight deuce with two diamonds. Not exactly the best board for my exact hand, but it can't be too bad for my raising range pre-flop. So I bet out for $20, just kind of small, trying to uh, steal this pot for cheap. Kevin didn't drive an hour to get here just to fold for 20 bucks. Absolutely not. He puts in the call and we see an interesting card on the turn gives me a gutter to the straight. Well, actually a double gutter. Any three would give me the two to six straight and any seven would give me the four to eight straight. So uh, we definitely like this. He checks it over to me for a second time and now we are going to go large, try to get him to fold. I fire out for 75 and we see the snap fold. So $75 gets the job done there. Five high, taking it down like a boss. Right, nine seven off is the hand we are battling with in this next one. It's $20 to go and we are going multi-way to a flop, which comes jack eight five with two diamonds. Marco in seat one fires out for $50 and we are gonna see people putting money in the middle. Kind of a good sight. We have a double gutter once again. Any six would give me a straight, any 10 would give me a straight. A new face to the vlog, Zara. You guys will get acquainted with her throughout the entirety of this video. We may or may not play some big pots with Zara in the end of this video. She puts in the call. Kevin on my right puts in the call as well. And as if I was going anywhere with a double gutter, you guys are mistaken. I put in the 50 bucks and we are going off to a turn. Turn does not help us in the slightest. It comes the four of spades. Zara and Kevin check it over to me. I check it over to Marco. Will he give us a free card? Yes, he will. The price is right. Zero dollars to see a river, which gives me the second nuts, the 10 of hearts. Bang, we river the straight. Thank you, thank you very much, Marco, for not betting on that turn. Well, actually, I probably was gonna call a bet. There's diamond draws and spade draws out there. So if I call and brick my straight, and it's not a diamond or spade, I probably could steal it on the river. But uh, yeah, we make the second nut straight. And now we are gonna see some money piling in from our good friend, Zara. Who else? She fires out for $200. Kevin, out of the way, action's on me. I posture for a few seconds before doing the only move that I have left in my arsenal, and I jam all in for $550 effective. I have her covered. Marco thinks about it for a few seconds before folding. I faded the snap call. And Zara does not put in the call. Yes, she was bet folding the river. She might have had two pair there. In fact, I think that's pretty likely if she was thinking about it on the river. But an excellent fold from her. I have the second nuts, taking down a $500 pot. Of course, I got to let her see one. She shows the seven of hearts. <laughs> Next one is a fun one. Lucas raises it up to $15 from early position. Two callers to me, and I decide to pop it up with none less than the ladies to $65. Lucas. Think something is up and four bets me to $190. I know he's playing crazy. He wants to make the vlog. He's tired of editing all the videos. He wants to be in the vlog. So he four bets me to 190 and the action obviously folds back around to me. But against someone who's trying to mix it up, I have queens. I don't want to let him get there with a hand like King Jack suited, King 10, and a king comes on the flop. Okay, what, what, what did he make it? 190 Oh my gosh. It's good price. So if he wants to continue with a lot of those hands, of course, he still could have kings and aces and ace king. Looks like a Hollywood. I'm about to get five bet. I decide to five bet him to $500, and that is the price to go. I've seen enough of your shenanigans. No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Lucas folds his cards. We take down the pot. Easy game. <laughs> I don't know what you have. All right, a little mid-session update here with the man, Hemel. He was the one responsible for making this all happen. He went through Illinois Gaming and uh, went the extra mile to give you guys some content here from River Chicago. Just wanted to give him uh, a quick ability to say something to the vlog. What do you want to tell the people here, Hemel? Well, we just want to say, hey, this was our first ever recording uh, that the gaming board approved, and uh, we we're so glad that it was for Wolf Band. 
Uh, and uh, hopefully many more to go. And uh, if you like to play poker, this is the place, Rivers. This is, this is the place. Forward thinking people, awesome uh, GM here. And uh, the action is great as well. So huge shout out to him all. If you guys play in Chicago, say hi to him and uh, anybody else here in the staff. Now let's get right back into the action. I don't want to miss any hands. The action's really good right now. Let's go. As if we haven't had aces enough tonight, we are blessed with them one more time. This time out of the blinds in the big blind. Kevin opens a button to $30 and the action's on me. I decide to come in for a three bet to $125, to which that kind of confuses Kevin a little bit, of course. Button versus big blind. The ranges should be pretty wide, but uh, when Kevin decides to come in for a back four bet here, to $305. Now the ranges are getting a little tighter in Kevin's shoes. He probably has a hand like tens through aces, ace king, ace queen suited, all of that good stuff. I don't really think he's doing this with a hand like 10 nine suited. He probably would just flap me in position on the button. That being said, if I know he has a very strong hand, I either could come in for a five bet and just shove it on him, or I could play this tricky out of position and just put in the call. If I five bet, I'm pretty much telling him I have queens, kings, aces, and maybe ace, king suited. So that's a very narrow range. and I want him to have hands like tens and jacks and not let him get away too easily. You start sitting like that before or after you look at your cards. You look super relaxed. You look like you got a cold one in your hand. So I decide to put in the call and that is going to bring us off to a flop, heads up, out of position, which comes jack, eight, seven with two hearts. Nothing for me to do other than check. I really shouldn't have a leading range in a four bet pot. So when I check it over to him and he bets out for $300, now I have two options. I'm either calling here or I could get it in with my pocket aces with the ace of hearts. That's not exactly the best hand to have because if I shove here and he calls me, he can't have ace king of hearts, ace queen of hearts. So he's gonna be more weighted towards hands like jacks, maybe pocket eights, and then a lot of hands that I have beat like queens and kings. Don't really think it's a crime to get it in now. I probably am ahead. So I jam 850 in the middle and we get snap called. I'm gonna run the raw table footage for you guys here because this hand is definitely one for the books. You are good. Not anymore. Oh! Oh so sick. Unbelievable. Set over set. He flopped us in tough, tough shape there with a set of jacks. He turns the boat and we're going to river a better one with aces full of sevens. What an absolute cooler. I also put this on my shorts and reels and TikToks. Yeah, they saw it first, but a $2,300 pot getting shipped over my way, set over set here in the back room at Rivers. And uh, if these guys didn't know me any better, they probably would think that this game was set up. Holy crap. That's content. Oh, what do you want to say so to your sad. wife? Here's your shout out to your wife. <laughs> I'm not, showing, I'm not showing her this one. I'm oh, no. <laughs> Babe, if you're watching this, look away. I didn't give my cards back. We looked down at pocket aces once again. Zara raises it up to $15. And I come in for a three bet to 55 out of the small blind. Daniel in the big blind puts in the call and Zara does as well, leading us off to a flop which isn't so great on a 9-7-5 with two hearts board. I have the ace of hearts in my hand, thereby blocking a lot of their best heart draws. I start with a check out of position against two opponents. Daniel checks it over to Zara who says enough of this. I smell weakness. I'm jamming my 320 in the middle. Of course, she could have all the sets here, like nines, sevens, and fives. She also could have six, eight suited. I think she'd be raising that and calling my three bet. But then again, she could have a lot of heart draws uh, and then straight draws, like 10 jack, maybe 10 eight as well. So I decided to put in the call for $320. I also want Daniel to continue here with a lot of his draws as well. He ultimately decides to fold and later says he had queen jack of hearts. So that's interesting news. It definitely makes it less likely Zara's on a draw at this point. We are going off to a run out in an $805 pot. Let's see if we can uh, win this one. Turn comes a 10, followed by the six of hearts. Daniel, what a scoop down that pot. I have one pair. Oh, nice. She got it in on the flop with top pair. I had the over pair and Daniel who folded had the best hand of all, but uh, we're not complaining, 805. 
Ship it over to me, dealer. Let's go. And this guy would have won. With Queen Jack of Hearts, right? Yes, Queen Jack of Hearts. Tight. That's a hard call, though. All right, moving right along. I raise up Queen 10 suited from under the gun, and I'm going to get three callers, which means we are going four ways to the flop, which comes 9-3 deuce with two hearts. Absolute sun running. Can I turn a queen, a 10, or a heart? It feels like I have uh, too many out syndrome. Yes, that's the thing. When you have too many outs, usually it doesn't come, but I'm definitely not hoping for that to be the case in this situation. I decided to start with a check, extremely multi-way here. I'm gonna be doing that with a lot of over pairs as well. And the flop checks through, bringing in the seven of diamonds on the turn. On the turn, I decide now to go for a bet. I would do this with all my over pairs and top pairs, so I should do this with some of my draws as well. I fire out for $50 and Zara from the last hand, she decides to put in the call, leading us off to the river, which comes the five of diamonds. Really shouldn't change too much. I definitely am putting her on a draw or a one pair at best type of hand. So I'm gonna go for a bet and try to steal this with my queen 10 high. There's $190 to fight for and I wager $115. Hopefully that gets the job done. You make it hard to keep a poker face when you're staring at me like that. Now what you guys don't see off the screen of this camera to the right is Zara's staring me down here and uh, I give her a little bit of table talk and she asked me a few questions. I try to balance talking between having good hands and having bluffs as well. So just because I'm talking doesn't mean I have a very weak hand. Ultimately though, she decides to go for a raise and fires out for $350. And uh, yeah, we can't continue here with our queen time high. Having two hearts, it's not good to go for another raise here and try to bluff her off because I'm blocking a lot of draws. So I fold my cards. And uh, we're never going to know what she has, but uh, at least we're giving something back to Zara here. It feels like I've had her number the entirety of the night. Oh, 50 bucks to show. Oh, 50 bucks, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hustler, hustler, yeah. All right, we're going to war here with 9-7 of diamonds. I make it $15 to go, and Daniel decides to put in the call. Sam's wearing his hat backwards, which means he's playing some gangster poker, and three bets it up to $65. I'm not gonna fold for 50 bucks more. I put in the call, gotta give some action here, and Daniel gets out of the way. The flop comes interesting, queen, jack, five with one diamond. We uh, have nine high and a backdoor diamond draw, but San bets extremely small, $20 to go, and uh, for that price, even though I just have nine, seven high with pretty much no connectivity on this board, I put in the call there, and we spike ourselves a pair, the seven of clubs. So now we are gonna get a little bit sticky. We are in position on sand, so we have the uh, liberty of seeing what he's gonna do. There's 200 in the middle, and now he sizes up for $80. Like I said, I'm gonna get a little sticky here with a pair. He still could have a hand like ace-10 suited, ace-king suited, all that good stuff. I put in the call, and we see a bad card on the river, the king of hearts. It uh, definitely changes a lot of things. Ace-10 and ace-king now have us beat. We're still losing to queen-jack suited, ace-queen. Uh, King Queen already had a smoked 360 in the pot and he fires out for 115 Don't really think uh, about it too long before folding. However, I think that's kind of wrong the small bet on a card that really should help sand Maybe I could raise this. What if he has a hand like ace queen or queen 10 here? He really doesn't like this king and usually small bets are indicative of sort of weak hands So uh, if I'm putting him on a queen I could go for a raise here to like 500 and probably get him to fold at the end of the day though, I just give him too much credit. Definitely a card that helps him more than myself. And I fold my cards. Sand's kind enough to show us a queen. So uh, it's possible a bluff on the river would have worked. The queen of hearts is what he showed. And uh, he's taken on that $500 pot. Nice hand, sir, nice hand. All right, let's battle here on the button against our good buddy, Mung. If you guys have seen a few of my Chicago vlogs, Mung is probably one of the best personalities in all of Chicago poker. Always a good vibe and always watches my videos. She gets bummed when I uh, travel to Michigan in Chicago and I don't hit her up to play. So of course, we have to give Mung a ring here and get her into the game. She was a late addition. She drove around an hour to get here, but this time did not get a speeding ticket because last time I hit her up to come, she got a speeding ticket. She wanted to play so bad. She raises it up to $20. I come in for a three bet to 60. Is she gonna come in for a four bet or just put in the call? In this spot, she just puts in the call and we're going off to a flop which is decent for my range, ace, eight, seven, rainbow. Mung checks, I go for a down bet and she puts in the call, bringing in the nine of diamonds on the turn. When she checks it for a second time, I like either betting or checking. She of course still could have pocket eights, pocket sevens, ace eight suited, 
all of that good stuff. So I don't really hate checking behind here for pot control. I would do this with a lot of hands like ace queen and ace jack as well. I think ace king probably just continues betting. But when she checks it over to me on the turn, I decide to check behind for pot control like I said. That brings in a very connected river card, the 10 of hearts. When she checks over to me for a third time, I'm trying to get all the one pair type of hands to fold. If I'm going to be checking the turn with ace queen and ace jack. Ace jack now has a straight, so I can represent that. And I fire out into Mung for $100. I get snap called, so uh, my bluff does not get through in that spot. She sniffs it out, 407, going over her way. She has a very beautiful hand, ace queen offsuit. Nice hand, Mung. Nice hand. If you guys are in the Phoenix area, you're gonna wanna hear this. We have a meetup game coming up on Sunday, November 12th. 4 p.m. is the start time at Gila Lone Butte, just outside of Phoenix. I did a meetup game here around a year ago and it was an absolute blast. So many degenerates came out. We were giving out bang stickers left and right, people buying me drinks. It was a blast. So we're running it back November 12th, 4 p.m. Come make the vlog. We'll have a blast. I'll see you there. Bang. All right, two hands to go and both of them are pretty spicy. Jake, our good buddy from Iowa, he raises it up to $20 from the low jack. Of course, I have to three bet him with the bullets. I make it $60 to go, to which he obliges, puts in the call, and we see a paired board, queen, queen, eight with two diamonds, and Jake checks it over to me. Gonna go for a small bet here of $40, and Jake puts in the call. That brings in the seven of hearts on the turn. Jake checks it over to me for a second time, and a lot of you guys probably would be scared to continue betting on this turn. However, the, he, of course, he could have a queen, but he also could have some diamond draws and hands like tens and jacks and nines. So I don't really think I like checking behind here. I want to get value. If he check raises, it's probably just going to be a queen and we can let it go. But uh, you want to go for thin value. That's where a lot of the profits come from in poker. I fire out for $75 and Jake obliges, puts in the call once again. And we see a river card, which is a brick, the three of clubs. I think if he had a queen, he probably would have announced it on the turn. So I'm going to confidently go for a very thin value bet on the river. At this point, I'm just targeting hands like tens and nines. Maybe a hand like ace eight suited or a seven suited. I think those are a little bit more ambitious. But when he checks it to me, I fire out for 100. And we're not going to get any more value. He folds his cards. It's likely he had a flush draw. Maybe I should have sized up a little bit on the turn, but no worries. That brings us into the last hand of the night, and it's an eventful one. I straddle it for 10 bucks, and uh, I look down at King Queen of Diamonds. Kenrich raises it up to $20, the old min raise. Very, very strong min raise, but I'm going to come in for a three bet. I have a premium and make it $70 to go. Kenrich, four bets me to 200, so now, like I said earlier, the ranges are getting pretty condensed. He definitely has a strong hand at this point. I think he just would flat with all of his suited connectors and weak pocket pairs. But I have King Queen suited, and I think it's worth a call for $130 more. And especially when we flop ourselves top pair, King 7, 5, Rainbow. We also have the backdoor diamond draw to go along with it. I check it over to Kenrich, and he probably should go for a $100 to $200 bet, representing hands like Ace King, Pocket Kings. Although I think kings could mix in some checks because they just have this board absolutely smoked. Kenrich goes a little bit larger for 250 and uh, he doesn't have much more in his stack. I decide to rip it all in for $470 effective. When I make a pair in a four bet pot, I'm not looking for reasons to fold. I'm looking for reasons to get it in. So if he has queens or jacks, he probably has to pay me off for $220 more. But uh, when I rip it in, he snap calls and shows pocket aces. Let's run the board out. Oh. Oh. Great hang, great hang. Yeah, of course I made some video. Of course I made some video. Yeah, so $1,400 getting shipped over Kenrich's way. He makes a set of aces on the turn. Had me smoke the entire way. Maybe I fold preflop. Maybe I don't. King, queen of diamonds going down in flames. And uh, yeah, we were up big at one point. But with that last hand in the books, we rack up our chips and uh, head over to the cage. All right, that wraps up a six and a half hour session here at Rivers, Chicago. Got in for a thousand and unfortunately got out for a small profit of $133 at our peak. We were up 1700 and uh, we gave it all back. A few coolers, but getting aces four times in one session, pretty sweet on the inaugural vlog here at Rivers Casino. Shout out to the floor, the dealers, everyone that was cool with being on camera. Put a, a sign outside letting me know that filming was going on. A pretty cool experience here and of course, Shout out to everyone that came out and uh, wanted to make the vlog. A uh, big thank you to Hamal once again for setting this all up. And uh, hopefully many more of these to come. If you are in the Chicago area and are good action and want to make the video in the next few times, shoot me a message on Instagram or leave a comment down below. 
Good luck on the felt, you guys. I hope you run about as good as I did in the uh, first half of this session. I feel like Justin Fields playing good in the first half and then uh, shooting the bed in the second half, but uh, we'll get him next time. Good luck on the felt. Catch you in the next video as always. Peace.